Alright, hello there today. Um, today I am going to be working on this cart. Now, this came from my brother's place of employment. I believe it was used. These are just legs for some kind of shelving unit that they were removing. So he took them home and it came with these nice caster wheels. So what I'm going to do is just turn it into a basic square car that you could put something on top of and wheel around whatever that may be who knows but basically I'm just going to of course weld all the square tubing together <clears throat> and then take these cast wheels drill some holes and just use the cotter pins that it came with um, and melt them together um, originally it was all of these cast wheels were in all of these holes there for whatever shelving unit it came off of. There's the rest of them down there and there's more. But then I'm, once that's done, and then I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a piece of plywood and just lay it over the top of this and then use carriage bolts to mount it to this. So first things I'm doing, or the first thing that I am doing rather is just marking the holes for all of my caster wheels. So I'm gonna have to drill a hole in the square tubing. And then I'm going to mount or drill eight holes for the, the uh, piece of plywood on top, which I'll use carriage bolts for. So I'll do a hole here, a hole here, and a hole down here on each long piece. And then just a hole in the middle here, and a hole in the middle here on the short piece. All that I'm going to do in my drill press. So I'll mark up those holes. I'll catch you then. Alright, I have marked off where I want my holes, so I'm going to start with the short pieces that I'm going to use for bolts to go down through the plywood and through my sides. Um, I went to the local hardware store and just picked up some quarter inch carriage bolts, since all it is is just holding down the piece of plywood on top. So, I just got my holes, my holes marked for here, and then I'm going to get the drill in. Alright, so I have now have all of my holes drilled. Uh, got one here, here, here on both long pieces. I have all my holes drilled for my caster wheels and the hole drilled here, which you just saw. Next up is I need to start cleaning up the metal so I could start doing my welds here and here on all the corners. Um, Right now, I'm just have it kind of put together just so I can see, <clears throat> make sure everything lines up correctly, and it does. Um, if you've done any fabrication work, you know what these are, but these are actually just magnets that hold pieces of metal together like this, and they, you know, you can make them do a various number of ax uh, angles. Um, these are, oops, these are small ones over here in the corner doing 90s for me. And of course, there's also bigger versions that you can get that also do 90, and then you can do 45, and then this is a 135. This big part right here is 135, and I think this is a 45, and this is, of course, a 90 this way. <coughs> but, yeah. So next up, I just have to clean up all the edges, or grind off all the edges so it's clean metal so I can weld it together.
So about three quarters of the way done tacking my uh, pieces together. And at some point, my cart here has become warped. Which is common, I mean, I sort of expected it to happen. And I tried to prevent it, but it still happened. But I could still fix it, however, if I rest on one edge and then come over and push on the other, the parts, the pieces and parts that are, you know, warped or out of shape or didn't line up correctly, sort of mush where they're supposed to. So I'm gonna have to get a couple more tacks this way with it. Try and flatten it out. That's what we'll do next. So there's my first weld that I laid down on this cart. Came out pretty good. There's a little bit of a edge on it down here, but I have more than enough penetration. I could probably turn the heat down, but I'm gonna keep it like this. Now, I mean, I've done plenty of welding on my Jeep, but it's always good to get more practice. So, I mean, that's part of the reason why I'm building this cart. So, I'm gonna do some more welding. Catch you back later. <clears throat> this is my second weld. Came out a lot better than the first weld. I mean, going from working on my Jeep, which is fairly rusty metal and doing a lot of rust repair besides, of course, the rocker panels. I mean, going from working on that on your back with your head fucking crooked up against the tire or something like that, going to working on a table like this makes a world of difference. It also makes a world of difference to always have, you know, nice, perfectly clean metal on like working on the Jeep. So, and if you're wondering, the break in the middle here is where I had my tack. So, that's going to continue doing some welding. Vertical welds are, just by their nature, uh, much harder than a flat weld like that up there. Because what happens is, as you're you know, welding your piece, the weld puddle kind of tends to, has a tendency to, to drip down on you, kind of like that. And out of all of the vertical welds I had did on this cart, this is probably the best. And what I had sort of noticed or found out, I suppose, is I just had to move much faster than I normally would, and instead of making, you know, passes back and forth like this, like I would have done on, say, this weld right here, I just did a nice straight lifted line down like this, you know, more quickly than I normally would. And I suppose part of that is also the fact that there isn't a flat piece here, it's just an open tube, but it's just something that I had learned, I suppose. So now that the welds are all done, uh, the next thing I need to do is grind all the welds on the top side down so I could get my piece of plywood that I'm going to put on top of this just to sit flush on the metal. Now one could argue that I mean I'm not like I'm going to put anything super super heavy on there. I could have probably not welded the top seam but I wanted to anyways just so I could get some extra practice in. You know as the old saying goes practice makes perfect. So what I'm going to do is just like I said just grind the top of these down so it's flat and then I'm gonna clean it up, put a coat of primer and then a coat of bed liner on it, just a Rust-Oleum, you know, truck bed liner that you buy at, you know, your A's, truck supply, or even Walmart. Put that on there, just so it has a semi-strong coating on it. And then I'm just gonna cut a piece of plywood out, lay it on top of there, and I'm gonna use carriage bolts to hold it down. So, we'll get going on that. We'll see, see what happens.
All right, I have all of my top welds all nice and ground down. I have gone over and cleaned up all the vertical welds. So uh, most of them were decent enough where it wasn't a big deal. Um, I didn't clean up any of the welds on the bottom, or I didn't clean up any of the welds in the corners. And then I just went and took and wiped it down with some mineral spirits. Um, and before, actually right before that I also took my measurements this way and that way so I could cut out the piece of plywood. Now I'm just going to hang it up somewhere and paint it. Here it is, all nice and painted up. There's the piece of plywood. The plywood was just painted with some really old uh, paint that we had lying around the house. I had considered not painting it, but I mean, we had the, the paint lying around, so I figured I might as well use it up. So it's painted that nice gray color. The frame itself is painted in, uh, I believe I mentioned this before, but it's just rust -Oleum truck bed coating. Nothing special. Came out really good. It has a nice little bit of a truck bed type texture onto it. But the next thing I have to do is assemble all of it. So the caster wheels all will line up with their individual holes on the, the long pieces. And then of course they have their, their own pre-drilled holes themselves. And then there's just a cotter pin that goes through. I elected not to use bolts. I could have used bolts, but I mean, I figured it's not. This isn't necessarily that heavy duty, so I'm just going to stick with the cutter pins. And anyways, even besides that, I mean, most of the carrying capacity of the caster wheel is going to be this channel that it sits in here, not necessarily the cutter pin. The cutter pin just keeps it from moving up and down the uh, the frame. So I'll get myself set up and. Uh, to watch the assembly process. Oh, and uh, but the piece of plywood that I had already drilled the holes for um, is going to be held in with quarter inch carriage bolts. So I'll grab those and see where it goes. So here it is, the cart finished. I got the top on there, I got all my carriage bolts in, got the caster wheels in, came out good, rolls nice. Let's see, flip it over for you. Should hold up just fine. For moving simple stuff around if you have a shelf shelving unit dresser or something like that and you need to roll around perfect and that does it for this week uh, episode of week in handyman be sure to like comment subscribe and check us out on facebook